just listen to all of those birds. You know, we had the spring equinox just under a week ago and boy, do they know it and they're singing their little hearts out. Spring is officially here and the allotment this morning is basking in beautiful sunshine and it's hard to believe that just a couple of weeks ago we had snow, my pond had frozen over and it was definitely winter. March is definitely a very changeable month. Another thing that has confirmed that spring is officially here is that we had our annual seed swap last week. So you know that in last week's video I was preparing for it and uh, the day after I was going to the seed swap and it was a resounding success. We had more people than we had in past years. We raised over 200 pounds for the allotment associations and I found a few finds as well, including catnip. So I'll be growing some catnip for Louis and Chibis this year again. Chibis doesn't really bother with it, but Louis really, really likes catnip. Another thing that I've been doing here is preparing for the year ahead. So I've been manuring and I've also planted an edible wild hedge. And that came courtesy of a nursery in England called Hope's Grove Nurseries. And they donated a box of edible hedging here to the Allotment Association so that has wild apple, so crab apple, plums, um, pears, elder, plenty of roses, all kinds of things that will benefit not only the local wildlife, but also will produce fruit for us in the years to come. They've also donated a box to the Isle of Man beekeepers and I ran that out to them and they are absolutely delighted with it. It's already in the ground and they've, uh, they're very, very pleased and that's going in their new training apiary. So that will benefit the bees there. It will also create um, a windbreak so that new, bee new beekeepers can learn in uh, relatively non-windy conditions, which can sometimes be a challenge here on the Isle of Man. So we're all pleased, the allotment and the Isle of Man beekeepers. And as far as my own bees are concerned, I had a little peek in to my colonies a couple of days ago. At this time of the year, you kind of worry as a beekeeper, do they have enough honey left over? Do they have enough stores? But they've got plenty. So the bees are doing fine. They're actually flying around as well. And it's great to see them out and about. And that is also a sign that spring is here. So today's video, we're going to just have a look at the allotment garden and see what's growing. And then I'm also going to take you on a walk around our site and look at other people's gardens. So the allotment is a, a communal garden in case you're watching from outside of Britain. And we have about 20, 25 people. I can't really remember the number now because we've had a few new people join up. Um, and we all garden on little plots of land all together here on the slopes of Glenroy on the Isle of Man. And it'll be fun to kind of have a look around and see what perennials are starting to pop up and see if there's any daffodils and other flowers and uh, get our juices flowing for some creative garden inspiration for the rest of the year. So let's go have a look and see what's growing. Sure enough, there are plenty of daffodils blooming. Such sunny and cheerful reminders of spring. Look at that. So my plot begins just over here. And there's not a whole lot of green on it at the moment, but there will be. This bed here, this is where I grow raspberries and I've got two different varieties in here. So I have a red type and a golden type. And I've just mulched the top with um, horse manure from a local equestrian center. And there are little signs of life. So if we look here, there's a raspberry coming up. And over there we have some garlic chives. And I'm so tempted to cut these down and use them but at the same time, I love that they're here and they have that little bit of green that uh, reminds me that soon it will all be green. Along this side of my allotment, I'm starting a lavender hedge. 
and you can see there's a bare patch at the bottom but these plants I put in last year and they're filling out nicely. Kale is pretty much one of the last edibles on my plot at the moment so I'm picking some and I'm going to take it home for dinner tonight. And I also spotted that it has started to sprout at the top, which means that it knows that it's spring as well and it will soon be flowering. So going to seed. So need to eat this before it's too late. Down at the bottom, I have a patch of garlic that's growing really well. This in, in the winter time and you'll know that this is my Chinese garlic. Funny story but I ordered what I thought was British garlic and it arrived from China. So we shall see how it does. I decided to plant it anyway after reading the reviews and the reviews of the Chinese garlic was actually surprisingly good and I think some people when I mentioned it, that they thought, oh, maybe it, maybe the company actually put these reviews on, but they looked very genuine to me. I keep this little patch here as more of a, a wildlife patch. And I've got a few perennial, perennials in it and we'll be planting it up with more flowers. These here are called Welsh onions and they're like gigantic chives. And I use them as you would green onions or spring onions um, or chives. And they're very reliable. They come up first thing every year and they continuously put out new green growth all through the summer. I would highly recommend them. I grew these from seed, but if you know of someone who has some growing already, they can be divided into clumps and then grown on from there. The pond has thawed for the second time and I have frog spawn in the pond here and some of it hasn't made it and it's probably going to be food for the other tadpoles. But you can see over there that there are plenty that have produced little froglings. Those little black squiggly things are future tadpoles and I've actually seen some tadpoles in here just yesterday it's a bit murky but they are in there somewhere at the top of my plot i keep an american style mailbox and i just put a few hand tools in there so just more out of convenience than anything else but um isle of man <laughs> I got this off of Amazon or eBay. eBay, I think it was a few years ago, and it's been a really useful tool in the garden. Down here we have the Egyptian walking onions. Let's have a closer look. These are a perennial, they come up every year. And I don't really eat the bulbs, but they do form little tiny kind of baubles at the top, so little sets of miniature uh, garlic cloves. And they're quite fun. You can press them through a garlic press and away you go. They're, they're more of an onion than garlic, but they look a little bit like garlic. The valerian's coming up again. There's some right there and there's some right here. And valerian is a really tall, I would say, I think it's a, a wildflower that a lot of people do cultivate and grow in the garden. The flowers smell beautiful, insects love them, and the roots, when you dry them and make them into a tea, is a, a natural uh, sleep aid. The strawberry bed is ready to go for some new plants. So I've, I've tidied it this year, as I usually do. I've, I've mulched it with manure and this entire area here. So all along here, I've removed the strawberry plants in there. They were older and I'll be putting in two more rows 
of new strawberry plants that I've just got from Thompson and Morgan UK and the variety that's going into this patch is called Mara des Bois and they're growing on in the greenhouse at the moment. I got them as bare root plants but it was too cold to plant them out and so I've been growing them on in little pots. Oh, the gooseberry starting to put on some leaves. Look at this. Signs of life, guys. Spring is here. Now this patch has gooseberries and currants and blueberries, and I'm partially there with tidying it up and mulching it. And I'm doing a combination of seaweed and horse manure as a mulch for these plants. I've got plenty more manuring to do on these beds. All I'm basically doing is covering the soil with about an inch or two of manure and then I will be planting kind of maybe moving aside some of it and planting into the soil underneath as uh, the spring progresses. Oh! Buds on the apple tree. This is an apple tree called a, a Red Love. It's from Lubera and it's red on the inside and the out and it's finally getting to the point where I think that it'll produce a few apples this year. Had a few last year but they were tiny. Now over here this is my new plot that I took on recently and a friend of mine helped to clear this area here and it's revealed quite a few soft fruit bushes including black currants, red currants, and gooseberries. And then I've continued on with the work of pruning all of these plants over here. So these are mainly thornless blackberries, and I've just put all of the material over to one side, and I'll be using it to build a compost pile very soon. It looks a lot tidier than the last video. Much tidier. One of the best things about growing on an allotment is that you can have a bit of a mooch around and see what other people are up to. And it looks as if manuring, so laying down manure as a mulch, is on the agenda for a lot of people. The lady who has this plot is super keen. And I love seeing what she's doing with her little garden. Lots of raised beds. And this is actually a great idea for if you are gardening on a slope like we do. There's not a whole lot growing on the site at the moment, but there are some lovely cabbages here, well protected from the local pheasants by nets. More cabbages. I've actually started sowing some cabbages in the past couple of days, and we'll be doing so throughout the um, spring and summer, it just goes to show if you put a little bit of forward thought into what you're going to grow, you will, you will have greens even now. This is our treasurer's plot, a very experienced gardener. He's also got a big garden at home, which I hear about occasionally and uh, hope to see one day. He's gardening also on a slope there. So it looks like it's just manuring, clearing. I see some leeks and um, I think shallots over there, some onions that he's got started. In the distance, some rhubarb coming up. Let's zoom in on those. Yeah, he's got some lovely rhubarb popping out of that. It looks like he's just been piling up compost over them. This rhubarb is up and running. Geez, look at the size of it. Compared to the rhubarb on my plot, these are massive. These are on the currently vacant plot. And um, 
these stems are ready for picking. Look at that. It looks like a patio apple is planted here. And there's a really lovely structure along here made out of is it hazel or some, some type of small sapling. Nice idea and a good use of sticks and twigs that are free if you have it growing on your property. A couple of days ago, I came up here and on my own, I planted all these little saplings and there's a good mix of varieties here. And the idea is to establish an edible hedge. So on the other side of this little ravine where a little stream runs in the spring and winter. And there's all kinds of edible plants here and I've left the tags, the main tags on them. So this one here is a bird cherry. And then up along here at the top, we have another cherry. We've got another cherry here. A dog rose, which will produce rose hips. Sweet briar rose. I'm not altogether sure which one this one is, but I'm sure it's going to be amazing. There's lots of blackthorn planted. And those produce sloes, which people know um, about with, um, as far as making slow gin. Another type of rose. These ones produce the really big fat hips that, that you um, often see planted in, say, car parks or municipal plantings. There's also elder, so we can look forward to some elderflowers and elderberries. And last but not least, we have crabapple. It's so lovely out that I've been able to take off my jacket, which I haven't been able to do very much recently. And I decided to pick a couple of daffodils to take home as well. A little reminder of spring inside the house. So I hope you enjoyed that look at my allotment garden in March and also a peek around everyone else's plots. There's a lot starting to wake up, little flashes of green here and there, some rhubarb that's taken off. And this is kind of the calm before the storm. So everything is, is slowly waking up, but before long, so within a matter of weeks, we are going to be inundated with seedlings and plants and of course, weeds. The best part, right? <laughs> Thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me and YouTube know that you enjoyed the video. And also subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. I release a new video every Sunday and that comes out at 6 p.m. UK time, 1 p.m. Eastern. Roundabout. We just put our clocks forward an hour here in Britain and it might just be off by an hour for just a few weeks in the, in the US. But in any case, I'll be back here next Sunday with another allotment garden video here on the Lovely Greens YouTube channel. Thank you again for watching and I will see you then.